Hey everybody, Nick here, and today got a little disassembly and maintenance video for you on this little guy right here. This is the um, A.G. Russell uh, little lightning bug, or uh, lightning bug, that is. They don't say little, but it's it's a lightning bug, which is implied to be little. All right, let's go ahead and pop this guy loose. Free spitting. All right, so we're going to go ahead and use this other little T6 here just to support it on the back side here. Um, if you're curious about any of the tools I'm using for my disassemblies, nickshabazz.com slash tools has a video where I describe each and every last one of them. All right. Is this attached to the barrel spacer? No? Okay. So, uh, A.G. Russell, interesting company. This is a knife right here that Tony Scullumbrini over a Gear Geeks Live and Everyday Commentary, um... Gear Geeks Live being a, whenever we get around to filming it, podcast, the uh, recording it, I suppose, podcast that I am involved with, um, that Tony has founded. But anyways, Tony has been a big fan of this knife for roughly ever. And I had always thought, you know, okay, Tony, you're a little crazy here. This isn't going the way that I had hoped, but it's certainly going acceptably. <laughs> there we go, okay. So the pivot is on the other side. That's fine. It's a topsy-turvy disassembly. Go ahead and pop this the rest of the way out here. And the problem solved. But anyways, Tony has been a big fan of this knife for a long time. And so it was about damn time I actually finally handled one. Hey, phosphor bronze. That's nice. Um, The internal liner uh, around this bearing, around this washer here. Nice little frame lock, well, not frame lock, liner lock. Yeah, honestly, so far, so good. Looks like a simple knife done reasonably well. But yeah, A.G. Russell is a brand that you've seen on the channel for the, well, first, second, or third time, depending on the order which these things air. But um, I got a batch from them for the very, very first time. Purchased, that is. You know, I, I went and handled a bunch of this stuff at Blade Show. There, you know, a social media guy reached out to me afterwards and whatnot because I introduced myself at the end there. But, um, you know, this was a, a batch of knives that I decided it was important for me to purchase because anytime I'm looking at a budget company, um, there's always the question of is their material, you know, is their work actually worth a damn? You know, and I'm always conscious of the fact that it would make a lot of sense to a, a bad company. I'm not saying that they are a bad company, I'm just saying it would make a lot of sense if you are unethical to send better than usual review samples to reviewers, right? And so, you know, especially if they're at these kind of price points, they're predominantly made in China, it was important to me to order under an assumed identity, so to speak, and um, then pick up uh, before I, I let them send me anything, so to speak. That just seems like a, a good idea. Luckily, my patrons make that very possible to do. But anyway, so I, I ordered this set after that, and this was one that I knew I wanted to check out, both because I saw it at Blade and it was nice enough, and because Tony is a person whose gear intuitions I very much respect. You know, we disagree, he and I, we're different humans, we have different preferences, but by and large, when Tony talks, I listen. Um, you know, he, he's a person whose gear is, or who's, you know, he is a reviewer who I pay very close attention to. And, you know, he will often make me buy things, you know, unintentionally, but, um, and vice versa. So, his endorsement of this meant a great deal to me, um, and immediately meant it's something I needed to do. Okay, um, we are actually pretty much cleaned up here, so this is going to be real easy freaking peasy. I'm going to go ahead and use some knife pivot lube here. Um, it works very nicely on phosphor bronze washers. Go ahead and put a little bit right here. And right here. And I'll try and drop a washer on here. It doesn't really matter uh, which direction this is going, but I'll try and face any burrs towards the scale rather than towards the blade. I will put a little bit of knife pivot lube around the pivot itself. I feel like lubricating a knife pivot with knife pivot lube is kind of really what this is all about anyways. Okay, blinds, I hear you. My blinds are being drama queens through the wind. But since I don't want a direct ray of sunlight coming in right here, 
Not that we don't want a direct ray of... Okay, I have super over-lubricated that. Let's go ahead and clean that up a little bit. Because, like, I, I over-lubricate things. This is a thing that I do, but holy cow, that was a little much even by my standards. Okay. Now we drop a little bit in here. And let's drop this washer on that direction. Rotate, rotate. Now we are, uh, yeah, we're good to go. So I'll go ahead and drop this onto here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, beauteous. Um, all right, let's go ahead and drop this screw back in using a little Loctite. Did I have a, have I mentioned if you've ever curious about any of the tools, lubricants, or otherwise I'm using during my disassembly here today, go ahead and check nickshabazz.com slash tools. And you will see all of them laid out with links to purchase and everything. Mostly to address the inevitable cavalcade of questions that I get regarding these things. All right. What's funny is I still do get that question very regularly, even on videos where it's stated directly in the video. Some people just don't watch the whole thing, I guess. Go ahead and put the pivot back into position here. This has been one of the easiest disassemblies I've done in a good little while here. And we are free spinning. Okay, that's fine. Well, okay, not really, but... Not really. Oh, wow, what a problem I have. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Alrighty. Go ahead and no blade play. Ooh. Centering is very slightly uh, favoring the lock side, which means I can probably loosen the pivot a touch. Yeah, there we go. A little bit of play, okay. So maybe the centering is just slightly off on this one. Here, let's tighten this up a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll actually try and I'll loosen the back screws a little bit. Okay. No play. And now what I'll do is, like I said, I'll loosen these back screws. The reason I'm doing this is because it's always possible that there's a little bit of tension in the system, so to speak. So I'm pressing the blade in the direction opposite the... Basically, I'm pressing the blade towards where I want the centering to go, then retightening. Sometimes that can make a difference. In this case, it doesn't appear to have made a difference. I should have checked the centering beforehand. Would have made things a little easier. You know what? There is always one question, which is, did I put the washes in backwards, and is that important? Practically speaking, it shouldn't matter. But, you know, look, we're eight minutes into this. You've already seen the process. I could be done right now. So, you know, if centering doesn't matter to you, let's go ahead, and you can go ahead and stop the video. But um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead, and because this is easy enough to do, just swap those washes around, see if that makes any difference. Okay, free spinning pivot. I'm going to use a trick here to get this loose. What I did there is I'm applying downward pressure on the blade, which actually kind of locks the pivot in position like this um, and allows me to turn it without another driver at hand. Um, it, it's not necessarily ideal. I'll often use the other driver, but, you know, in that case, I was just freaking done with it, so I figured, why not? Okay, clip that off. And the only thing I am doing in here is exchanging the washes, switching those guys around. We'll see whether this makes any difference. It really shouldn't. If these washes are machined identically, which they should be, it shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. But I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. Because, you know, I'm always hesitant to say, oh, your centering is bad. If I actually, if the centering was okay from the factory, it's still ugly. If the centering isn't reliable and depends on a weird esoteric assembly process, a great knife shouldn't need skill to disassemble. Um, but anyways, at the same time, you know, I want to make sure I'm being fair here. Let's swap that around. 
Drop this into position. And it could be as simple as there's a burr on one of the, although I didn't really see one too strongly. There's a burr on one of the washers. Okay, we've swapped those two around. Let's go ahead and reinstall the pivot here. Why must you free spin? I may need to tighten that down further, but we'll find out in a bit here. And to tighten it down further, I may need to uh, use the other driver. Okay. Almost back together. Luckily, this is a very easy knife to take apart. That is a good thing. Eat CR13MOV. This is going to stress my steel snob at dude a little bit. <laughs> okay. It is currently facing the other side. What's wrong here? Is there something like outright screwed up going on? Like a stop pin is seated on both sides. Let me try tightening down the pivot a little bit to see if that helps me. I don't think it will, actually. I think, actually, what went on is when I swapped the washers around, it got worse, not better. Which is interesting, but... Okay, let's loosen that up a little bit. Whoa, substantial blade play. So... Tighten that up a little bit here. There is still a little bit of blade play there. And the centering is now outright abysmal. Okay. Well, that's not good. I'm wondering, did I put in the pivot? No, like, did I do something wrong here? Because this ain't acting quite right. Maybe this stop pin is laterally different and that's what's causing our pain and of course that's freaking free spinning A.G. Russell come on people D-shaped pivots exist they are a thing and they are a thing you should make for this knife all right and I'll go ahead and Try and take it apart from this direction. Because at least then I'm just working from one side. Come on. All right. So here's the next question. This is not fully seated on this side. Does, is that a problem? I'm going to use just a little bit of extra torque here. Let's see if I can... Let's see. I want to see if this works. Oh, probably should put the blade back in place. My hypothesis here is that the um, that maybe the p stop pin there wasn't fully seating because of how it was oriented, and that was what was causing my pain. So I have not exchanged the washers again. Um, this is the kind of troubleshooting that, were I a brilliant man, I would probably not show. Because, well, I'm sorry, were I concerned with looking like a brilliant man, I would just cut and go back to the start. Make a whole new video just pretending. But the thing is, at the same time, it seems like it's a little more honest to do it in this way. To actually show off the mistakes one can make. If I have indeed made a mistake, if we put this guy back together and we see exactly the same problem again, then I've made no mistake. And it's just a 
really finicky knife. But, you know, this can be a way to learn to troubleshoot some things. But anyways. Okay. When fully tensioned, like squeezing this shut, I'm noticing that the centering is bad. So I don't think that actually changed anything. And I think I'm going to be changing the washer orientation one more time to get us back to kind of near centered rather than actually, you know, rather than tragically centered. Okay. Right now, not scented. Substantial play. If I tighten this further, it will actually exacerbate the issue because that will move it this direction. Ah. All right. One more time with feeling. Luckily, I'm getting pretty efficient at taking this damn knife apart. So it wasn't the stop pin at all. That wasn't our issue. Um, in fact, it was the fact that the washers are asymmetrical and therefore if you have them in the orientation it doesn't expect, or I'm sorry, there's one orientation in which they work very well and there's another orientation in which they do not work well. Make sure there's nothing under the washers there because that could cause problems, but there isn't, so that's not causing problems. Check for burrs, no burrs. All right, there's that. Here's this. Drop your washer into position here. And as I throw this around, put this here. Beautiful. Then finally, I drop on the carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is quite attractive, I'll say that much. Let's see where we land. This is definitely a knife. My understanding is that this is a knife that is benefiting from skilled assembly. This is not a good thing. Um, some people may think I would think otherwise, but no. A knife should never require skill to take apart and maintain. Generally speaking, skilled assembly, meaning that, you know, the knife will be substantially different depending on exactly how, in subtle ways, you put it back together, is a sign of poor tolerances, in my estimation. Because very often, well, you end up with, uh, you know, that skilled assembly is covering, basically, for uh, faults elsewhere. You're putting lipstick on a pig with skilled disassembly. I'm not saying this is a pig. I'm just saying that in terms of disassembly, this is not super well designed. Or made, I suppose. The design seems fine. Okay. No play. Not quite centered. I really should have checked the centering ahead of time. Because there was a little bit of play at the start of it, as I recall. No play. I'm not centered. Can I loosen this up a little bit? No play. Well, at least very light play. You know, that's close enough to centered to be acceptable to me. But still. And Let's loosen just a scotch. No play. That is... That's borderline acceptable in centering. I bet if I loosen any more, though, we're going to gain some play. So we'll probably center it perfectly, but yeah. So, yeah. A little bit more loosening means play. So the moral of this story here, unfortunately, is that this is a knife that is going to be fiddly to disassemble. Um, at least on this particular example, swapping the washers causes substantial situation um, in terms of centering and play. Pardon me, damn it. 
too far. And in order to get this in a situation where it is both without play and remotely well scented, yeah. So, it's a shame. However, at the same time, it's life. Um, that's what you get very often with inexpensive overseas-made products. Um, not that 70 bucks is inexpensive, but still. Um, yeah, there you go. So, uh, not the most satisfying thing ever, but hey, it worked out at the end. And uh, hope this has been interesting to you. And have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.